Hello friends, today we start with a new chapter in Standard 8 Physics ICSC that is the second chapter Physical Quantities and Measurements. Now in this particular chapter the physical quantity which we are going to study the mainly is density. We are going to study what do you mean by density, we will study how to determine the density of the certain substances, we will also study that how does the density of a substance determine whether that particular substance can float on a liquid or it will not float on a liquid and sink. So these are certain things what we are going to learn in this particular chapter. There will be certain numericals based on the same and also the different kinds of explanations to the same. So to start with we need to first of all understand what do you mean by density. Now density means, in a simple way, density is nothing but density is given by ratio of mass upon volume. That means, if I have got a particular substance of a unit, a unit volume, so like for example, I've got one meter cube of a box and that contains some material so 1 meter cube of box jo hai uska jo mass rahega suppose it is 7 kgs then the density will be 7 upon 1 so that will be 7 will be the density of that particular material so accordingly depending upon the ratios of the mass and the volume there will be the difference in the density of the substance so we can say the density is the mass per unit volume, unit volume means one volume, one meter cube, one centimeter cube, one liter, wo sab unit volume hai. Toh, the mass of that unit volume of the substance is called as the density of the substance. So we have density, each body has a certain mass and a definite volume. Okay, we know that each and every body has got a certain mass and a certain volume. The volume occupied by the body increases if its mass is increased. Similarly, the mass of the body increases with an increase in its volume. It's very simple to understand this thing. Suppose I tell you that I have taken this one pen. So the, of course the mass is also one pen and the volume is also one pen. Now if I take two pens, automatically what has happened? The mass has also increased because of two pens and the volume has also increased. Now if I take three pens, now I have got more mass and more volume. So we see that as uh, the mass of the substance keeps on increasing, the volume also keeps on increasing. And if I decrease the volume, there is a decrease in the mass. But when I take two different substances, and I have substances which are of the same masses. It is not necessary that they will have the same volumes. So it is not necessary that if I take equal masses or equal masses of two substances, okay, equal masses of two substances, and it is not necessary that they will be of the same volume. Like for example, if I take this particular duster, and let me take something else. Uh, Okay, I'll take this stapler. Now, if I see the mass of this thing, definitely the stapler is heavier as compared to the duster. But if you see, volume-wise, the stapler is much less than the duster. So, I can see that, or even if I consider that both the mass same bhi hai, so they are almost equal. So, even if I consider that both the mass same hai, to bhi, what will happen? The both are of same mass, but the volumes are different, right? So we see that if the bodies are having the same masses, it is not necessary that they will be having the same volume. In fact, they will be having different volumes. So we see that equal masses of different substances have different volumes. For example, the volume of cotton is much larger than the volume of any equal mass of lead. Now, lead is a very, very dense material. It is very heavy. 
सो पॉसिबल है कि अगर मैं लाइक कॉटन लू इफ आई टेक वन के जी ऑफ कॉटन द वन के जी ऑफ कॉटन विल बी ऑलमोस्ट लाइक अ पिलो यू नो इट सो सच अ बिग वन सो इट विल बी सच अ बिग क्वान्टिटी but the cotton will be that big quantity it that also depends how compressed it is if you are just putting it in a fluffy fluffy manner then it will be much more quantity right now the same con uh, mass that is 1 kg of lead if i take it will be even smaller than this pen if i make this pen completely made of lead then the weight of this pen will be much more than 1 kg so you can see even if it is 1 kg you can understand that kaha ek volume itna bada mass ka cotton ka whereas weight wise that is also 1 kg and this is also 1 kg but that has got more volume whereas this has got so small value and why is that so because the lead the particles which are present in the lead they are tightly packed they are compressed they are tightly packed because they are tightly packed that's why they do not occupy more space and that's why they have got more denser kind of a material and hence the density of this is more so you can see that equal masses of different substances have different volumes for example the volume of cotton is much larger than the volume of an equal mass of lead this is because the particles of lead are closely packed while those of cotton are very loosely packed in other words lead is denser than cotton now the vice versa is also true now initially maine kya kiya tha dono same weight ko liya tha 1 kg of cotton and 1 kg of lead now what i am going to do is that i'll take the same volume so if i take suppose it is i got this pen on this pen but this pen is made up of iron and this pen is made up of plastic will the mass of both of them be the same no the plastic one will be very light whereas the metal one will be heavier okay so you can see over here that equal volumes of different substances have different masses okay equal volumes of different substances have different masses for example the mass of iron is much more than the mass of equal volume of wood okay if i take anything made up of wood and i take anything made up of iron then definitely the one which is made up of wood will be lighter lightweight whereas the one which is made up of iron will be very heavy this is because the particles of iron are more closely packed than those of wood in other words wood is uh, the iron is denser than wood thus to explain that equal volumes of different substances have different masses or equal masses of different substances have equal vo different volumes we use a term and that called as we use a term called density so density is the term what we use to identify between the equal ma masses with different volumes or equal volumes with different masses hence it is defined as follows the density of a substance okay it is defined as the density of a substance is its mass per unit volume density of the substance is mass per unit volume that's the density of a substance so according to say density of substance is mass of the substance upon volume of the substance now if i take the density of the substance if i want to say the density of substance as d and i take the mass of the substance as capital m and the volume of the substance as capital v then i get the formula that density is equals to m upon v that is mass upon volume so it's given that density of a substance is represented by symbol d small d if mass of the substance is capital m and its volume is capital v its density will be given by the formula d is equals to m upon v okay that's the formula of density density is mass upon volume now if we know the dense formula of density and we know what is mass and what is volume we can easily find out that what is the si unit that is the system international unit of the density so accordingly we see that density can be given by 
mass is given in kg and the volume is given as meter cube so definitely density is given as kg per meter cube written as kg n minus 3 that's the density si unit of density that is si unit of density is kg per meter cube but of course i can also find out the cgs unit that is gram centimeters so that is why if i use it in 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 the cgs unit the kg will be not kg but it will be in grams and meters will be in centimeters so it will be centimeter cube according will be gram per centimeter cube this is the cgs unit of the uh, particular thing okay so that is why the cgs unit of density is gram per centimeter cube and the mks unit of the or the si unit of density is kg per meter cube so we say that in si unit the system the unit of mass is kg and unit of volume is meter cube so si unit of density is kg per meter cube that is kilogram per cubic meter in the cgs unit system unit of mass is gram and the unit of volume is centimeter cube so cgs unit of density is gram per centimeter cube or gram per cubic centimeter now let us find out the relationship between the si unit and the cgs unit so if i have got the value as 1 kg per meter cube or i'll better write it at this way so 1 kg per meter cube now very well know that to convert the kg to gram i multiply by 1000 so it will be 1000 in grams similarly to convert meter cube to centimeter cube i will have to take meter see we know that 1 meter is equals to 100 cm so meter cube 1 meter cube will be equal to 100 raised to 3 cm cube so it is 100 into 100 into 100 sorry so this three zeros cancel with the three zeros here got it so that's why you can see over here that 1 kg per meter cube is equals to 1 upon 1000 gram per centimeter cube or we can say 10 raised to minus 3 gram per centimeter cube so 1 kg per meter cube is equals to 10 raised to 3 min that is 10 raised to minus 3 gram per centimeter cube opposite of this is 1 gram per centimeter cube is equals to 1000 because this goes over here it becomes 1000 1000 kg per meter cube so these two things helps us to convert kg per meter cube to gram per centimeter cube or gram per centimeter cube to kg per meter cube so it's a simple thing that if you are given the value in kg per meter cube to get it in gram per centimeter cube you are going to divide by 1000 kg per meter cube to gram per centimeter cube divide by 1000 and when you are given the value in gram per centimeter cube and you want to convert it to kg per meter cube you are going to multiply by 1000 so if the value of some but let's say the density of iron is 7.8 gram per centimeter cube okay if it is 7.8 gram per centimeter cube then its density in kg per meter cube will be 7.8 into 1000 so 7800 kg per meter cube okay so for converting gram per centimeter cube to kg per meter cube you multiply by 1000 when you want to convert the kg per meter cube to gram per centimeter cube you divide by 1000 am i clear on this okay we move forward so we see that the relationship between si and cgs units is 1 kg per meter cube is 1 kg per meter 1 meter cube is equal to 1000 grams upon 10 is to 3 100 is to 3 cm cube so it's equal to 1 upon 1000 gram per cm cube thus 1 kg per meter cube is equal to 10 is to minus 3 gram per cm cube or 1 gram per cm cube is equal to 1000 kg per meter cube so they given the examples over here that the mass of an iron cube of volume 10 cm cube is equal to 78 grams 
So the density of ion will be 78 grams upon 10. That is the mass upon volume. 78 was the mass in grams and volume was 10. So it is 78 upon 10 is 7.8 gram per centimeter cube is the density of the ion. Similarly, the mass of 1 centimeter cube of water is 1 gram. Hence, the density of water is 1 gram upon 1 centimeter cube means 1 gram per centimeter cube. The next example is of a copper, that a piece of copper in of mass 8.9 kg. See, it is given that a piece of, of copper is a mass of 8.9 kg has volume 0.001 meter cube. So volume is 0.001 meter cube. So what is the density? 8.9 upon 0.001 that will give you 8900 kilogram per meter cube. So it is 8900 8, kg per meter cube will be the density of copper. So this was about the density. Now we, okay, there is one, do you know over here? So in the do you know, first thing is the density of a substance does not change with any change in its shape or size. So if I take a material, like say if I take iron, whether the, I cast the iron into a ball, or I cast into a cylinder, or I cast into a thread, anything, the density of that particular iron does not change. So the density of a substance is not dependent upon the shape or size of that particular substance. We are not talking about the body. So for example, if I take the, the, the density of iron, then iron ka density is 7.8 gram per centimeter cube irrespective ke main wo iron se ek stapler banau ya ek ship banau stapler ko main pani mein daunga to doob jayega but ship ko main pani mein daunga to wo float hoga so why is that so because ship ka density is different than the density of iron ship is made up of iron but the ship is made into a form which will not sink Okay, so the density of ship is different, but when we are talking about iron as a substance, then iron ka density will be equal in any form. The iron will not have different densities for different shapes and sizes. That's what they have written over here. The density of a substance does not change with any change in its shape or size. Another important thing is that whenever you heat any substance, what will happen? When you heat a substance, it starts vibrating, moving more and more, molecules go apart and what happens? It expands. So now we know when anything expands, what happens to its volume? Volume increases. What is the relationship between density and volume? Volume is inversely proportional. If my volume increase, hoga, density decrease. Hoga. Agar my value decrease, hoga, the density increase. Hoga. Okay, so volume and density are inversely related to each other. So what happens whenever you heat a substance, the, on heating the substance, the substance is going to increase in size. That means its volume is going to increase. The increase in the volume will decrease the density. So on heating any object it is going to increase its volume hence decrease in density but there is an exception you know what is the exception water strange right yeah but water has got which is called as anomalous expansion it is anomalous behavior or anomalous expansion between 0 degree Celsius to 4 degree Celsius. If I heat water from 0 degree Celsius to 4 degree Celsius, instead of expanding on heating, it contracts on heating. Similarly, if I am cooling water, so 4 degrees the contract hoga between 4 degrees and 0 degrees instead of contraction it expands. So what happens? Water is going to behave abnormally when it is cooled below 4 degrees Celsius or it is heated from 0 degrees Celsius to 4 degrees Celsius. So between 0 and 4 degrees Celsius the, the water is going to behave ulta and then normal. What is ulta of normal? Means 
on heating it contracts and on cooling it expands okay that is the behavior of water which is called as anomalous behavior of water between 0 degree celsius and 4 degree celsius so that's what you are given over here almost all substances expands on heating and contract on cooling but their masses does not change so the density of a substance decreases with the increase in temperature and increases with the decrease in temperature okay so that was the basic part that on increasing the temperature the density is going to decrease and on decreasing the temperature the uh, density is going to increase but exception is water on heating above 4 degrees celsius so on heat on heat uh, expansion water which contracts on heating from 0 to 4 degrees celsius and exp on heat expands on heating above 4 degrees celsius so the density of water increases from 0 degrees celsius to 4 degrees celsius and then decreases above 4 degrees celsius so that means the density of water is maximum at 4 degrees celsius and that is given by the value as 1000 kg per meter cube Okay, so this was about the anomalous expansion of water and density. Now we see the next part and that is determination of the density of regular solids. What do you mean by regular solids? Any geometrical figure, okay, any geometrical figure jiska volume hum log koi formula se dhoon sakte hain. Okay, like for example if I am having a ball, it's a sphere. If I have got a Rubik cube. It's a cube. So I have got a definite formula for the volume of a cube. Volume of a cube is given by side into side into side. Okay, that there are three sides, length, breadth, and height. So all the three are sides. That's why it is side cube. If I take a box which has got the length, breadth, and height, like for example, if I take the book, then what is that? This is the length. This is the length. This is the breadth, and this is the height. This is the, the thickness is the height. So the volume of this book is what? Length into breadth into height. So this is a regular solid. So in this way, whenever you have a regular solid and you want to find out the density of the regular solid, we have got a very simple thing. You find out the mass, you find out the volume using the formula, and then you find out the density. So the normal regular solids what we are having is first is a cube, where the volume of a cube is side cube. Okay, one side into cube, that is the volume of a cube. Second is a cuboid. Cuboid is a box, rectangular box. That will be length into breadth into height. Okay. Length into breadth into height gives me the volume of the cuboid. Then it's a sphere. Sphere is a ball. The volume of a sphere is 4 upon 3 pi into radius cube. Cube of the radius. So what is the radius? It's a cube. So that is a pi 4 upon 3 pi. Pi ka value is 22 upon 7 into radius cube. Then it's a cylinder, like for example this pen, so cylindrical pen, what will be that? That will be pi into r square, this is the radius of the circle, your circular part, that is r square into height, h, h is the height over here, so pi r square h, that is the volume of the cylinder. So by finding out the volume of the given standard structure, what you have got, uska volume dhoon ke hum log calculate karke rakte hai. Next thing is that you are going to take the mass of that thing. How do you mass measure the mass of, mass of any substance? Using a beam balance. You take a beam balance and, mass, and find out the mass of that substance. So you have over here, first measure the mass M of the given regular solid by using a beam balance. You are going to use a beam balance and find out the mass of the given regular solid. Second is, now to find the volume V of the given regular solid, use the following formula. Volume of a cube will be one side cube. Volume of cuboid is length into breadth into height. Volume of sphere is 4 upon 3 pi into radius cube. Volume of cylinder is pi into radius square into height. Where pi is given as 22 upon 7 or as per that expression is 3.14. It's one and the same. It's 3.14 is the value of pi. The side of the cube or length, breadth and height of the cuboid or radius or sphere of the radius of the height of the cylinder and height of the cylinder can be measured using a normal meter rule. So if I want to find out the height of this thing, I just take a scale, put it over here and find out how much height is. So that is using a normal meter, school, meter rule, I can find out the 
length of these particular substances. Now, knowing the mass m and the volume v, we calculate the density d of the substance of the given regular body using the formula d is equal to m upon v. For example, if the mass of the cube is of an iron is 210 grams, suppose it is given to me that the mass over here is 210 grams and the volume is equal to because it's a, it was a cube and the side of the cube was 3 cm so it is 3 into 3 into 3 that is 27 so it is 27 cm cube so the volume of the swing will be 210 upon 27 will be 7.78 .7 gram per cm cube so this is how we are going to find out the, vol the density of a given regular solid so if I know if I want to find out the density of a regular solid I need to find out the mass of the solid and I need to find out the volume of the solid using the formula for the regular solid volume of the regular solid. So that was about how I measure or determine the density of a regular solid. We now move on to the vessels for measuring the volume. Now in case of the standard regular thing yes we know that we are having a a formula for that but what will happen if I want to measure the volume of the stepler you can see iska volume do now what difficulty because there are so many cuts and everything over here that I cannot find out the volume of this particular thing at all so for that we are going to use a cylindrical vessel or basically you are going to use some measuring jars which can help you to measure the volume of the different uh, or we can see, call them as measuring volumes okay the vessels for measuring volumes which will continue in the next video